Welcome everyone back to Beyond the Cinema. It has been a very, very long time. Last movie we reviewed was uh, Love and Monsters. Oh yeah, it was. That's not, okay. That was still was that this year or last year? That was last year. Okay, so it's been a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, no, it's been a while. <laughs> um, but we're back. We really like. I just think we felt kind of motivated. We want to get back in the movie reviews. We tho- focused on short films for such a long time, and we're still doing that. But we're kind of want to get back into this, and we thought. What better movie to start with than the glorious return of the prodigal son? The blessed day <laughs> has come. The Snyder Cut of Justice League is now available to stream on HBO Max. When we're missing Ethan. Uh, he's out of town this week, but that's all right. We watched the movie and we wanted to talk about it. I mean, like, putting the obvious aside, I feel like it's a waste of breath to say it's better than 2017's Justice League. Definitely. But not just better, it's it's good. And I think what really, really sells it and what I think really makes it really solid, and it's something that I really appreciate about Birds of Prey and Shazam and like some of the more recent DC entries, this one didn't feel like a movie made by Warner Brothers. It felt like a movie made by a filmmaker. It had one vision for the Justice League. Because you could really tell in 2017s that it was the vision of dozens of business people. And maybe a bit of Joss Whedon, tiny bit of Zack Snyder in there. 2017's Justice League had no vision. So this movie takes itself so effing seriously. But because the vision is so cohesive, I just got caught up in it. Like, I think if you watched any of the scenes that like are really Snydery, like by themselves, you'd probably think, like, look at this edgy tryhard, like trying to make some dark Justice League movie. But in the universe as a whole and as a sequel to Batman vs. Superman, I really liked watching it, getting caught up in the world and caught up in Snyder's vision. Just having a filmmaker make a movie was really enjoying to watch. For sure. Regardless of of its flaws, I definitely think it was a a breath of fresh air. I think that Hollywood needs more of that in general, not just with, you know, the superhero franchise. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want more stuff like this. So I wanted to talk about how the action had improved in this movie, and I think a huge influence on the action in this film was because of the R rating. I don't want any more PG-13 superhero movies after this, because it's not like Deadpool, where it's like just beating you over the head with the R rating. Yeah. But man, it it really, that R rating is such a blessing. Really, I think it makes the experience better, the the movie watching experience, especially in the uh, first Wonder Woman scene where she's kind of taking down these terrorists who are going to blow up this building full of people. That scene just got so much better compared to the, the Whedon cut. Like, it's so intense. It, it is. It is. It's really threatening. Yeah, it went from being kind of campy and goofy to like, it really felt like it had stakes. Like it was a yeah. big deal what was happening. Yeah. That wasn't just like a, oh, we need to show people that Wonder Woman's in this movie. <laughs> right. No, it can be said for the whole movie that I think there were a lot more stakes in every aspect of this movie than the Whedon cut. The action that every character dealt and the fighting that every character in the Justice League dealt in this movie was just infinitely better. Like, I loved how Cyborg was getting into it and the Flash was getting into it. Oh, it was was top tier Justice League stuff. Oh yeah. Like following up on that, I think it, it really shows how that 2017 cut of Justice League, they barely stitched together a movie. Oh yeah. It's unfathomable how they didn't use Snyder's cut. Like, it it really, after you watch it, because yeah, Zack Snyder's Justice League is not perfect. We're not coming in saying it's the the best superhero movie ever made. It's not the new Dark Knight or something like that. Right. But compared to the 27 Justice League, it's phenomenal. Why did we not get this? But, all right, serious things aside, because this wouldn't be a review from Beyond the Cinema (laughs) if we weren't nitpicking the most absurd and ridiculous (laughs) and pointless things you could ever notice in a movie. Yes. So they changed the way Steppenwolf looks. He looks much less Liam Neeson-y. Yes. And looks much more Metal Orgy-y. Absolutely. Like in a Michael Bay Transformer. 
Yes. And actually, watching the movie, I thought, like, in the photos, the armor was stupid. In the actual movie, I, it was kind of cool, like, how yeah. it, like, breathed and moved and stuff like that. Right. But, oh my heavens, Steppenwolf looks like a little baby rock boy. It's like the thing was a baby. Like... <laughs> It was not even remotely threatening. Like, once he got the glowy blue eyes, I was like, okay, fine. Like, yeah. I'll take that. But there was a moment when he was, like, looking up in fear at Desaad, and I was like, oh, look at the brother, the baby boy. His dark side's gonna hurt him. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, it was, I couldn't move past it. <laughs> Ethan has a dog named uh, Kona. And I want to say, Steppenwolf in this film is, like, identical to this dog's face. <laughs> like, little underbite going, big old puppy eyes. Like, that is 100% Steppenwolf in this film. Something I uh, noticed. And it was kind of frustrating for me because we had, it had been confirmed far before the movie that we would be seeing Martian Manhunter in this film. And that would, you know, that's pretty exciting. Another member of the Justice League. He wasn't going to play as big of a role, obviously, but we were going to see him. And I was kind of disappointed with the way that we saw him, because he was very clearly, like, thrown in there. It felt too sudden and out of place, seeing him in the few scenes that he was in. It just didn't didn't carry over well in my opinion. Yeah, I'd say I'm going to poop on WandaVision a little bit. Yeah, do it. But Martian Manhunter was like white vision. Oh, yeah. Where, like... It was real dope to see it, and you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is a fan hype, fan servicey type thing. But it really had nothing to do with the overarching story, even a little yeah. bit. On a, on a small, funny side note, <laughs> the first scene that we see Martian Manhunter appear in, he's posing as Martha, talking to Lois Lane. <laughs> And uh, we were joking about this, but I thought it was funny how later in the movie we see Lois Lane and, and Martha meet up again. <laughs> and I was thinking, surely there had to be some kind of comment from Lois Lane, like, I really appreciated that talk we had. And Martha's like, what, what talk? <laughs> huh? <laughs> My house just got sold to the bank. Why are you speaking to me? <laughs> There's no way that that wouldn't have happened. I was happy to see Martian Man hunt her. But why TF did that guy not help out at all with Steppenwolf? Like, he was willing to pose as Martha Kent to, like, help Lois not be sad. Yeah. He shows up to talk to post-alcoholism Ben Affleck for a couple of minutes. Hey, just so you know, I know the fight's over, but if you need my help, I'm here. <laughs> One shoehorn thing that I actually really appreciate appreciate it. this is my final thought on this man i freaking loved jared leto's scene at the end and like i am one of the biggest jared leto joker critics there is because i was one of the people who was so insanely hyped for him in suicide squad i dug the design i liked the metal teeth and the tats i was like this is gonna be cool new version of the joker and then it was awful and i just, it was so let down i hated it so much so I was a I was pretty skeptical. I was like, oh man, we're in we're in for a rough ride. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like we're getting full edgy Jared Leto Joker. And dang, he was so good. Yeah. And him talking with Batman, like, I know it doesn't compare to like the interrogation scene in the Dark Knight. Like, that's so good and that's incredible filmmaking. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking like a Batman Joker interaction, like from the comics, that was so good. Yeah. So, like, my final thought is I just think Zack Snyder had a great vision. The additions he made, um, some of them didn't go well. Like, some of the fan service didn't go well. Some of it really, really did go over awesome. And overall, I think it's just, it's an enjoyable watch. So, I'm going to say see it. I'm definitely going to say see it. Final thoughts for me, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. You know, so short and simple, it was better than, a lot better than Joss Whedon's version. And... I'm happy with what we got. I am a bit sad that um, Zack probably won't be able to continue his, I guess, trilogy of Justice League movies that he had in mind, because uh, if he if he could keep making them like this, I would definitely see it. 100%. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I totally would, and, and that's, that's kind of sad, but like Tyler said, there were flaws, but there were a lot of really great things in this film. I'm also gonna say see it. Awesome. Well, 
we're going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. We're really happy to be back to review movies, and we promise we're not going away anytime soon. Kong versus Godzilla. I know it's the other way around, but I want the monkey to win, so I say <laughs> Kong's name first. We'll be seeing that in the next week and a bit, so expect a review for that soon. Yes. And let us know if there is anything that you would like us to review, or if you would like us to continue doing these movie reviews, because we're happy to do so, and we'd love to hear your feedback. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. It really help us to be able to get our content out there and to know what you guys want to see more of. So have a great rest of your day and thank you for going with us beyond the cinema. Brunch? Well, who is even brunch?